Hello fantastic people! Today we will learn how to create this awesome menu with multiple functional buttons, including play, settings, exit and mute. All of them with nice and sexy animations. Many, of course, after splash screen will be the first thing the player will see, so make sure it is nice and memorable. In order to achieve that I am creating and placing a set of military assets on a table-like surface, and adjusting the camera to have them all in the right half of the screen. In the meantime, I also add a small animation to the camera's rotation and position to make it less static. If you would like to learn more about animations, check this tutorial out. Using the post-processing, I adjust the colors slightly and add a significant amount of vignette. Time to create the first element of our UI. I click the right mouse button, go to Create, UI Toolkit and select UI Document. This creates a new UXML file. I call it Many. I open it by double-clicking, which makes us land directly in the UI Builder. I focus the file by clicking on it and make sure the checkbox Match Game View is checked. I added visual element that will serve us as the left section wrapper. I change its color to black and make it 550 pixels wide and 100% high. Using pixels is tempting, but will not be very responsive. You will see what I mean in a second. I add a little bit of margin from its left and then adjust the color alpha. Let's see it in the scene. I add an empty game object and add a UI document component to it. I drag the menu file to source asset input and for panel settings, I just create default settings. They usually work pretty well. Oh, our 550 pixels wide panel is definitely too narrow. To support a wide range of screen sizes, it is much better to change the pixels to person. Awesome. Now I add another visual element, this time for our game logo. I change its background to the image and then adjust alignment on the left section element to have it nicely centered. Another visual element, this time for wrapping the menu buttons. By the way, pay close attention to how you name the elements, we will need those names later when we write the script. Ok, time to add our first button. I drag and drop it into the buttons element, then adjust its label and add the menu-button class. This will allow us to create a shareable style for this button, which we will be able to apply to all other ones rather than style them all individually. I copy and paste this button twice, then adjust both names and labels. I make the button's wrapper grow to the full height by changing the setting in the flex section and then adjust the alignment. I also add a little bit of padding at the bottom to move the buttons up. Time to create our first style sheet. We do it by pressing the plus button in the right top corner and selecting create new USS. I am going to name the file menu styles. Now I'm clicking on the file and adding a new class to it in the top right corner. The class name is menu-button. Make sure you prefix it with the dot character. This is the way we identify classes. If you would like to learn more about different selectors, I will leave a link in the description. I click the class name and adjust some settings. Text size, background and border. I am also going to change the font. To do that, I first go to the project window where I already imported a font I like. I click on it and then in the inspector, I click on the three dots and select create font asset. In the new pop-up, I click Generate Font Atlas, which will create for me a file that I can use in the UI Builder. Once again, I select my class and in the text section, I change the font asset. Ok, let's make a hover effect. To do that, I am creating another selector. This time, dot menu dash button colon hover. The colon hover is a so-called pseudo class that is applied additionally to the element when the mouse is hovering over it. I click the selector and again adjust some settings, this time text color, size and rotation in the transform section. In order to test it, I click a small preview button in the top right corner. Looks alright, but it could use some animations. I open the transition animations section and adjust the duration. 
That's how long it takes to change the settings to those of a new class. I will need to add that also on the regular menu button class. Time to create another section. You see when I dropped the visual element it landed under the left section. It's because the flexbox is placing the items vertically by default. To change that I need another visual element wrapping both sections with the correct setting. Ok, I'll add one more element, call it the right section and inside of it I place a new button, our mute button. I add our class to it so the icon rotates slightly when I hover over it. I also give it the right name. Select the image and adjust its size. Then I simply change the alignment settings for the section and add a little bit of padding to have it nicely separated from the screen edge. I will need a script. Let's call it menu controller and drag and drop it on the UI menu object. Let the magic begin. We'll need a reference to our UI document and as expected we can grab and store it in the awake method. Time to work on the play button. We'll need a button type variable and then using the doc field first we want to access the root visual element and then use the generic queue method to query the actual button element. It requires us to pass the type of the element we want to get, in our case button, and optionally name. I recommend always using names, as this is a little bit more extensible and prevents you from nasty bugs once you add a new button and forget that the previous one also didn't have a name. And of course, we repeat that for all the buttons we have. Now let's handle clicking on the play button. To keep the code clean and hopefully more understandable, I am going to keep only the things directly related to what we create now. For example, here we have the reference to the button and a query to get it. Notice that I skipped even the part that grabs the UI document component. In order to handle clicks, we simply subscribe to the clicked event on the button. We'll need a method. Let's create one. As you see, the clicked event does not require us to provide any parameters, so this is quite easy. We simply use the scene manager to load the first scene. This is all we need to have a working play button. The exit button is equally easy. You see, we only use different variables, different button name, and our exit button on a clicked simply quits the application. Mute button time. We need references to the icon sprites and one bool variable to know if we are muted or not. Then, of course, we also need the mute button and as previously we want to subscribe to the clicked event. In the mute button on clicked, we reverse the value of muted variable. And now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. We first grab the reference to background image style from the button style. Then we assign a new sprite using the background.fromSprite method. The value depends of course on the muted variable. Then we simply reassign the background image styles. Oh, and of course this wouldn't be mute button if it wasn't muting anything, right? Well, this won't mute anything besides the menu, but sooner or later we'll learn how to mute everything everywhere properly. So why not subscribe to my channel and wait for it? Now we just need to drag the sprites and whoa, the magic is happening. And when it comes to magic, it would be great if you could cast this little like spell on this video and maybe even leave a scroll with a comment. I am sure the algorithm gods would like that. Ok, we are getting into a bit more fun territory. Changing the menu content. Dynamic. First, we need some references. Besides the button as usually, we also need one for the button's wrapper. Then, as previously, we subscribe to the clicked event on the button. As a first step in our setting button on clicked, we simply clear the section. That will remove all existing buttons. We'll need a little bit more space, so let me hide some code one more time. We'll need two more variables. 
one for the UXML file with the template of the buttons, and then another one to keep the actual buttons created from that template. In the awake method, we set the settings buttons variable to cloned tree of the template. This literally will just create for us a visual element with all the settings buttons inside. Let's quickly create them. New UXML file named settings template and nothing fancy inside. Wrapper with three fake buttons and a single actual one called bag button. Of course, all of them have our nice and sexy menu button class. In order to use the existing style sheet, you simply click on our friend little plus icon and then select add existing QSS. Let's save it and assign it to our script. Now there are two more things we need to add in the script. First. After we clear the wrapper, we need to add to it the setting buttons. Easy. Of course, in our awake method, we also need to subscribe to the back buttons clicked event. And then, whenever it is clicked, once again clear the wrapper and add the regular menu buttons to it. Ok, here's the whole relevant code in case you would like to have a look. And here's the whole menu code. I hope you found it useful. If you enjoyed this tutorial, like this video and subscribe to my channel. And of course, have a fantastic day. Love you and bye bye.